Okay, so now let's talk about uniform loads. Uniform loads is like considering when um, the top of a roof, a flat roof, is covered with snow, like in this, or it's when the weight of a beam, for instance, is not negligible, all right? Or for instance, when they sandbag on top of a beam, okay? So the intensity of a distributed load in a line would be something like mass, uh, I'm sorry, force per unit distance. So that would be like pounds per foot, um, kips per foot, or newtons per meter, all right? But it's simple to go ahead and convert this into a single load. All right, if we neglect the weight of the beam in this case, all right, and we say we have a distributed load of 60 pounds per foot, well, the overall load, the resultant of that, is just the little w times the length of the beam. So you take 60 pounds per foot, you multiply by eight feet, and you get 480 pounds, all right? The load is located at the centroid. Centroid, that's a funny word for something that you know in your gut what it is already. It is just the center or the balance point. If this is an evenly distributed beam, it's exactly halfway on the eight feet. All right, so the book definition is centroid, the point at which all the area is located. So when we're talking about centroids, we're talking about two-dimensional objects. In English, it's where it would balance on the tip of your finger, all right? Think about where you would balance a flat sheet of paper. When we're talking about three-dimensional object, we call that the center of gravity. So that's the basketball, that's your uh, baseball bat, and of course, for a baseball bat, it's gonna be further along the fat end. All right, so let's deal with this problem, okay, of a beam where we have the regular forces. This is an example right out of your book, okay? And now instead of this one being um, denoted by a single force like P1 and P2, it's a distributed load. So our first step is to change it into a single load. So the big W, is going to be equal to the little w times that length. And that is going to be 2 kilonewtons per meter times 14 meters. Okay, on a good day, 2 times 14 is 28. Oops, not meters. That's kilonewtons, guys. All right, so that becomes this, and that is 28 kilonewtons. And you see that that is located at the center of the 14 meters, seven meters in. All right, so now let's look at what that's going to look like. We say that x bar is equal to um, the sum of the moments about A. Well, I was looking for some symbols. It doesn't appear like I have them. Okay. So we'll go Well, I'm having all kinds of technical difficulties now, aren't I? Okay, let's do this. The sum of the moments about A, and all that's divided by R, okay? So, when we look at that, all right, let's see what is, let's start with talking about what is R. All right, R is three kilonewtons, and that's a negative direction, guys, right? Negative. Uh, then it's also plus 
the negative 8 kilonewton force plus, all right, then we have the weight, that capital W rather, they call it, um, and that is also a negative 28 kilonewtons, okay? On a good day, that means R will be equal to, let's see, 11 plus 28, I'm pretty sure that's 39 on a good day, all right? So the resultant is a negative 39 kilonewtons, all right? Now let's think about what is the sum of the moments about A. I'm gonna get rid of that here. All right. So it's first going to be the three kilonewtons times the five meters. And that's going to be a negative moment because it's going to tend to be clockwise. And that's going to be times five meters. Plus, all right, the next moment's negative two, eight kilonewtons times 12 meters, all right? And then the last one we have will be plus, it's also a negative moment. All of these tend to cause clockwise and we say counterclockwise is positive, okay? It is 28 kilonewtons times, all right, now stay with me here guys, it's the five plus the seven plus the four, okay, plus another seven meters, all right, so five plus seven is 12, um, plus 11 is 23, all right. So that's causing a big number down there at the end. So let's see what those are equal to when I plug them into my calculator. Okay guys, on a good day, I think that number is a negative 755. Wow, my cow, it's really angry at me. 755. And the units on that are, oops, that number's negative, okay? And then the units on that are kilonewtons times meters, okay? All right, so then from there, we want to go back to find an X bar. And X bar is going to be equal to that negative 755 kilonewtons times meters divided by the negative 39 kilonewtons we found earlier. All right, so when I divide by 39, it is X bar is equal to, mm, let's say 19.4 meters. Now, the thing I just wanna ask myself is, does that make sense? What's the total length of this bar? It's five plus seven, that's 12, plus another four is 16. Okay, so let's try that again. It's gonna be the five plus the seven, that's 12, um, plus four, that's 16, plus another four, that's 30. It's over halfway down a 30 meter bar at 19.4, does that make sense? Yes, because this 28 kilonewton force is very large, 
okay and it is almost at the end of the beam it is 23 meters into the beam so that kind of makes sense to me all right